um, radiation therapy in soft tissue sarcomas. Dear colleagues, um, as for the radio radiation therapy uh, in patients with uh, sarcomas of soft tissues, uh, the approaches are quite conservative because there are not that many patients like that and uh, there are not many trials. So today, on the one hand, if, if you look at the recommendations, existing recommendations, both international and Russian ones, we know two things. There are patients with uh, soft tissue sarcomas that uh, need radiation therapy because it lowers uh, the risk of local relapses. And uh, now the question is when to provide radiation therapy before the surgical intervention or after surgical intervention. And the answers um, are there. And uh, e we see that radiation therapy is provided both pre-operationally and post-operationally. But there were studies that, depending on the locale, Post-operative radiotherapy is similarly efficacious, but if you look at complications, post-operative radiotherapy looks attractive. And uh, sorry for this incorrect uh, statement, it's more standard method than pre-operative radiotherapy. If you look at clinical recommendations, you will see that pre uh, uh, operative uh, radiation can be used in patients uh, with uh, uh, soft tissue sarcoma as well as post-operative. If you talk about pre-operative radiotherapy, on one hand, we can reduce the volume of tumor. On the other hand, we reduce biological aggressiveness of tumor process because we have aggressive influence in it before surgery. And there is a whole range of very attractive and uh, important effects. On the other hand, if we talk about post-surgery radiotherapy, this is the method of treatment that allows to significantly reduce the risk of local relapses and at the same time has, uh, well, is very delicate and it diminishes the risk of serious complications. If you talk from the standpoint of radiotherapy, an important advantage of preoperative uh, treatment is uh, that we see the tumor very well. We can create and form the volume of radi irradiation. An article was published uh, two years ago which shows that if we plan radiotherapy in preoperative mode, then reproducibility of the volumes of radiation is very high between among therapists who have ex expertise. On the one hand, if you do that in post-operative mode, the reproducibility volume of radiation is much lower. Different radiotherapists take different decisions when they create the main uh, calculate the main volume of radiation. On the other hand, as to modern approaches from the viewpoint of preoperative radiotherapy, we obtain other opportunities, the use of non-traditional fractionation modes. Only one, I know one group which is actively dealing with this issue. These are our North American colleagues who use modes of extreme hyperfractionation. Uh, this is a kind of stereotaxic radiotherapy because they use doses, five gray, five, uh, five uh, fractions, six and seven grays. What is important uh, here? In this group, post-operative uh, complication assessment shows that such extreme fractionation of the dose modes are quite safe from the viewpoint of post-operative complications. As to the influence of dosing mode on local control, uh, this is a very important work showing that, on the one hand, radiation in patients with soft tissue sarcoma, and we are mainly talking about synovial and liposarcoma, radiation is important because it reduces the risk of local relapse by 20 percent. Uh, but fractionation modes uh, will be uh, 
five or eight fractions, uh, 3.5 grays, so the different modes of fractionation. And here we increase the dose per fraction, increase the number of fractions, which result in the effects similar to the ones at standard fractionation and radiotherapy. I wanted to show this case. This is the patient who was treated in many centers. First, he was operated in France, huge liposarcoma of retroperitoneal area. Then there was a relapse. And there was a two big relapsing neoplasm, uh, gigantic. And he was sent to us with a request to conduct preoperative radiotherapy because surgery uh, was not possible. But we understood that irradiating such big volumes would be difficult, but that was the only chance. And we decided that one neoplasm would be irradiated in uh, hyperfractionation mode to decrease the rate of the growth. And the second the largest one should be irradiated in traditional fractionation mode. And uh, so uh, we had to make him operable. In fractionation mode, we use five fractions. Uh, in the center and periphery, we brought smaller uh, doses, five gray per fraction. And the second tuber was uh, classically fractionation, classical, 25 uh, uh, per two gray, with two gray. When it was hyperfractionation mode, we didn't step aside from the margins of the tumor to diminish the number of possible complications and to leave uh, that uh, prospect for surgery. The result was interesting. When we started looking a month and a half after, and we found that the tumor, which had been irradiated in hyperfractionation, diminished by 2.5, and the tumor that was irradiated in the standard fractionation mode enlarged more than twofold, and we felt uh, uh, we saw that differences, hyperfractionation modes, probably are likely to um, result in different effects. And hyperfractionation mode studying is a very interesting perspective task. And using hyperfractionation mode and stereotoxic radiotherapy in oncological patients is also an opportunity to receive systemic effects. It's interesting. And uh, this is quite an enigmatic future, not confirmed yet. But of course, we see that we can impact tumor process. Patients with malignant nerve tumors and soft tissues uh, need systemic control. In this situation, radiation of tumor in pre-operation uh, uh, mode and hyperfractionation mode may bring additional benefits. Here we see that the main issue is the issue of systemic control. In my practice, if we talk about immunological phenomena, and it has no relation, direct relation to soft tissue sarcoma. So we deal with radiotherapy, extreme hyperfractionation. We started to look at immunological phenomena. Uh, this work is conducted in the laboratory. When we use stereotactic radiotherapy, uh, there, is a, there are serious immunological shifts. In 30% of patients, we see that at early stage after stereotactic radiotherapy, there is significant increase uh, in T helpers. And the number then goes down, and uh, three, six months afterwards comes back to the baseline. It's interesting. There are patients where diminution of T helpers goes slower, but uh, we see systemic effect in a significant uh, group of the patients, although there are patients when there are, which have no shifts. This plot shows that the number of T lymphocytes, as well as different lymphocytes, side subtypes is not changed. Such shifts are, were associated uh, with uh, the following one. Uh, patient was uh, had leomyosarcoma. 
and uh, of course it would be premature to talk about something serious but it allowed us to develop a protocol that you call scissors and rubber the point is that initially uh, it can be it can seem crazy we decide to combine pre and post operative radiotherapy both method uh, was planned to be performed in um, the total uh, uh, doses. Uh, uh, Preoperative was in hyperfractionation mode, and the volume of radiation uh, was strictly limited by the margin of the tumor. We didn't go beyond. The volume that we radiated was the one that had to be resected during surgery. And this is what we call scissors. The main idea of radiation of this volume was, on the one hand, to diminish biological aggressiveness of tumor and to decrease its volume before surgery. And if there is systemic immunological phenomena, to induce these immunological phenomena. On the one hand, post-operative treatment implied other goals. We classically radiated uh, uh, with big step ups from the primary uh, lesions and control over subclinical lesions uh, was important to diminish the risk of local relapses. The main goal was to assess postoperative complications uh, to make sure there would be no harm for patient. In the long term, way we had to assess the efficacy of this approach to provide local uh, control and maybe some systemic phenomena. Uh, this is planning of preoperative radiotherapy. Uh, you see the uh, limitations by tumor process. We don't go beyond uh, tumor margins. This is heterogeneous radiation. It's radiated five fractions for seven gray and uh, marginal segment, the mode five fractions for seven uh, gray. We have to diminish the risk of complications. Let's do post-operative. This is dose, distribu uh, dose distribution. If as to post-operative, the volumes are higher, the doses are more traditional, and the, um, the mode is traditional. Here we have a chance to use the advantages of hyperfractionation and uh, uh, normal fractionation mode. We have a chance to use all the benefits of pre-operative, uh, not losing the benefits of post-operative therapy. Preliminary results. At present, there are few patients that we treated seven patients. In post-operative period, we didn't see serious complications. The recruitment of patients is still going on into this trial. It's interesting that we receive post-operative material, which gives a chance to assess effects of hyperfractionated radiation of soft tissue sarcoma. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Will you tell me the case that you gave us? You irradiated small uh, tumor, 3.5 grave, uh, grave, eight fractions. When you well performed control, so what about effect from radiotherapy that was uh, completed earlier? And with larger uh, tumor, the control was uh, uh, with larger volume. The effect was not uh, uh, well yet registered. Well, by the way, the tumor uh, had a little volume. We radiated in the mode of five fractions, seven gray, a bit more stringent mode. You are right. Uh, first, these can be tumors which uh, are biologically heterogeneous, although this is a relapse of one and the same malignant uh, neoplasm. Of course, there can be different factors. The, at CT uh, period, 
a month and a half uh, uh, was spent after the last radiation, and then one more month. So it's about two. 0.5 months, uh, the mode of hyperfractionation. Maybe this effect is its place, but uh, these uh, dynamics of different vectors uh, seemed interesting to us. And, uh,